Hi, this is Scott Hanselman, and I wanted to share with you some of the new improvements in Visual Studio 2012 and ASP.NET 4.5 in this video, specifically model binding. The upcoming version of ASP.NET Web Forms has a number of improvements to data binding, but the most significant of these, I think, is model binding. Now, in previous examples, you've seen grid views populated with data using the data source property and calling the data bind method from the code behind. And while these approaches work, they have some limitations that are hard to overcome. Let's take a look at another way. I'm going to pull some data into the categories grid view here. I've got a grid view, and this is a grid view you probably used before in web forms, except I'm getting the data a little bit differently. Rather than using an object data source or using data source and data binding from the code behind, we've added a select method property. This tells the grid view a method to call to retrieve its data. Then in the code behind, you can implement that method and return an I queryable. So in this case, select method will call get categories. Look at the code behind. Get categories is going to go and return categories from, in this case, Entity Framework, although you can use any database technology that supports link. And that's it. Notice that there's no data binding in there. We're just going to return categories. It's an I queryable of category. And then the columns, in this case, using a dynamic field, is going to automatically figure out the right thing to do to show our grid. Notice also our URL doesn't say .aspx. We've got just slash categories, not slash categories.aspx. We're using routing to do that. That's the same routing that ASP.NET MVC developers have enjoyed for a while. ASP.NET Web Forms developers can do that as well. It's important to remember as we're going to click on Edit. Notice as I hover over Edit in the lower corner of the browser there, it says slash categories slash 2. It says it can't be found. No matter what I type in up here, it's going to fail. Let's go back and look at Categories Edit. Categories Edit is going to call Get Category. That's its select. Its grid is set up to call Get Category. But where is that value from the URL going to come from? Well, in this case, I've just got a method that takes an int, a nullable int with an ID. And in the old days, you might say something like request.querystring and ask for ID and then make sure that ID is not null or quote quote. And you'd spend a lot of time digging around inside of the HTTP request. Well, I can actually decorate this method's parameter with things like query string. And that would pull ID out of the query string. Or I could say form or I could say cookie. In this case, because I'm using routing, I'm going to say route data. I'm going to pull ID out of the route. That ID right there is expressed in our route over here in the global ASAX. Categories edit, categories slash ID. So when we say categories slash two, that ID is going to get pulled out automatically. And because it's named ID, that's going to get populated. Let's actually run a debugging session so we can see that happen live. I'm going to hover over, hit edit. Notice that the value of 2 has automatically been pulled out of the URL. I didn't have to say request.this or request.that. I just decorated it with the place that the data was located and it handled it for me so that parameter was bound automatically. Then I'll hit F5 and we'll go back to our page, make a small change. So in this case, we populated the edit category. Now we're going to update it. I'm going to hit save. And rather than thinking about things in terms of postbacks, notice that update category has been called. I can take a look at my grid again. We saw that select method used get category. Now the update method uses update category. The form view is automatically doing that for us. Where is category ID coming from? Well, in this case, it's coming from the data control itself. The data control knows that we're talking about categories. And we've said that the key for the type of object that we care about, the type of object is a category. The key for that category is category ID. So when that post back occurred, we automatically populated category ID. But 
we need all the values that are in the text boxes. We need to say request.form and get IDs and descriptions and fill our objects with all sorts of information. Often this kind of code turns into what I call left-hand, right-hand code, where you're saying category.id equals request.form quote ID. No fun. Take a look at category. It's null right now. I'm going to just pin that down. Put it over here so we can look at it. I'm just going to start stepping over. Notice the category just got filled up. Just got filled up with the current value of what's in category. Specifically, lovely smocks and shirts. So we can see the value of category description and category name. And you see I've pinned them there because I want to see them change. Now, here's where the magic happens. We've got the information for the newly updated category living inside of the HTTP post. We've posted back information that we need to get out. We could spend time digging for it, which is boring, or we could use the information that we know about categories and line them up. So we could call try update model. I'm going to hit step over and watch right here. Notice that my pinned little debug watch window there turned red to show me what value changed. We automatically updated the object, even complicated objects. And since the state of that object is valid, we can step over that as well and then save the changes. Return to the previous page and our value is updated. Model binding has a lot of flexibility. We've used it here for gets, for updates. I can decorate my parameters with things like query string, forms, cookies, route data. It makes for a much nicer looking web forms experience. And again, since ASP.NET 4.5 is an in-place upgrade of ASP.NET 4.0, your existing techniques for data access in ASP.NET will continue to work, but you can start introducing pages with these new techniques. You can start using the same repositories that your ASP.NET MVC fellow programmers are using. You can start using routing and then pull that information out of the route just like they can, and you're going to find that you're going to end up deleting a lot of code in your web forms. That's good. That's called refactoring by deletion. That means you're going to write more code that does work and less code that digs around inside of the HTTP request. I hope you like these new features of ASP.NET Web Forms. I encourage you to check out the other videos.